What's up, y'all? Welcome to the final boss of my channel in 2023. Please ignore that it's 2024 now. I make videos about Rain World, I make videos about music, so why not make a video about Rain World's music, a criminally under-discussed aspect of the game? Yes, this video is made mostly for myself and basically nobody else, but you'll watch it anyways. I know who you are. And of course, yet again, full spoiler warning for the entirety of Rain World Downpour here. Rain World's soundtrack is of a type that I can really only compare to one other game, Mid Underground. There is so much of it, for one, but the music tends to be designed as an atmosphere drink accompaniment rather than the main focus of the game, and yet you become intimately familiar with it without even noticing because it's such a constant presence in the game. And I can't really think of any other soundtrack that sounds quite like it either. The mix of chiptune, electronic music, and tons upon tons of field recordings and samples gives it both an organic and industrial feel that's just uncanny enough to feel alien to our world too, and I kinda love that about it. Whether it be the threat themes, the subtler ambience of each region, or the more proper tunes that pop up every once in a while, the songs do a great job defining the aesthetic of Rain World and of its individual regions, too. Rain World simply isn't Rain World without its music, and I think that's worth a discussion of its own, which is why this video exists. Why it exists in the format it's in is, well, uh, the collective soundtracks available on Spotify total up to over 160 songs and about 7 hours of music. I am not ranking 160 individual songs, that's insane. And also, while some songs are Kayava, others are literally 40 seconds of dark anime that's basically impossible to say anything about, so... That being said, I do need to outline how I went about organizing this video. Basically, any song that exists specifically as part of a region counts. Any song that has an environmental event, see this reddit post for the list I used, as well as all threat themes and a few other songs that are technically considered environmental ambience like, say, Random Gods. However, I am not including bumpers, as they're all, like, 20 seconds long, how do I talk about that? I'm not including any music that plays only during ending sequences, I'm not including any echo themes, and I'm not including Pebbles Music Pearl since it can be removed and thus no longer play in the region. That's probably nitpicking, but spoilers, it wouldn't exactly affect much anyways. As for how I ran the regions, it's basically a combination of how much I like each song in the region, how well I think the songs fit the aesthetic of each region, and just how much music there is compared to the size of the region. I played with the numbers for a while to carefully calculate a definitive ranking based on my own personal opinions, and then threw it out and reordered the list based on vibes because the numbers never quite lined up with how I truly felt. And unlike last time, I'm not counting past garbage waste separately as it shares 100% of its music events with the standard garbage waste, so just consider it a tie with wherever garbage waste itself ends up if you want. Though I originally planned to include all the Saint replacements songs as their own separate region, but uh, they absolutely cleaned house when I considered them that way. It wasn't even remotely fair. So they're all just stuck in with whatever regions they play in. And for songs that play in multiple regions, they're gonna count for each region they play in, but I'm only gonna discuss them once, with the region I feel like they're most associated with. Right, that's all the tedious minutia of this mess out of the way. Let's get right into it. The Rain World region with the worst, or well, least good music is... Not much to say about Silent Construct because it's, uh, it's in the name Silent. The construct is silent. There is literally no music that I'm counting, anyways, in any part of the region besides Frosted Cathedral, which also has two of its three songs, Dark Sus and Demonic Riser, reused from Shaded Citadel. And don't get me wrong, this isn't a knock against the region. Silent Construct has phenomenal atmosphere in its silence. It's one of the most striking regions in the game, and I wouldn't change a thing about it, but it kind of never stood a chance in this specific arbitrary ranking. That being said, it's one singular unique song, Fading Light, is quite lovely. It's got the same vibe all the other Saint-specific songs do, with chilly synths painting a gloomy scene and a bit of spooky undertones that creep into the mix that fits in really well with the formerly shaded Citadel's atmosphere. Not one of my favorites from Saint's set, but I really have no complaints about it either, it's nice. Really, the only reason that our next region ranked higher is on sheer virtue of it having a whole two songs to its name, so... Yeah, the exterior is another region where the environmental ambience does most of the work for its atmosphere. The strong winds, the flashes of thunder, the squelching of the rot, but its two tunes are fairly iconic at least. White Lizard is kind of just a welcoming theme to the leg, where, yes, White Lizards are often one of your biggest concerns. It's a nifty little percussive and kind of blown out tune that fits the overly mechanical scenery well, even if it's a little short. It screams danger, and boy howdy are you ever going to be in danger here. The only other tune the exterior has to offer is at the opposite end of the region.
And where one of the biggest struggles of making this kind of video comes into play because, like, none of these ambient songs are really meant to be listened to on their own. They're there to set a tone and there to provide atmosphere, and Stargazer is great for that, accompanying the big reveal that, all this time, there's been an abandoned city way above the clouds, confirming what the player likely already surmised, Ringworld is a post-apocalyptic world. It's suitably subtle and creepy for that moment. I can't think of anything more I could ask the song to do in context, but I also just don't see much use for the song outside that context. And there's ambient songs on the soundtrack I like way more anyways. And drowning out the painfully obvious bottom three of this ranking... Yeah, Rubicon's another region with one song at the start, one at the end, and nothing in between. And none of them are unique to the zone, either. Else 2, for example, is a reused echo theme. One of the spookier ones, for sure, and one that fits Rubicon's drastic tonal shift from the depths, from the safest place in Rainworld to the most dangerous. It's spooky, gloomy, ethereal, and dreamlike. Yeah, it works. And the other song is, uh, The Cycle. This only counts because it plays in the last few rooms before the ending sequence and for no other reason. It is literally just pictures of the past reversed and sent through a few extra layers of reverb. Utterly perfect ending to Sans campaign and downpour in general, and goddamn does it make me tear up despite everything. And this reuse has an almost random god's equivalent for the end of Rubicon, yep, on point, even if it is just more atmospheric ambience essentially. Though while we're on the topic... Yeah, the rod has eight songs, three were used from Pebbles, all of which fit perfectly fine here, we'll discuss them when we get to Pebbles, and five unique to the zone, and uh, all of the new ones are dark, minimal, unsettling ambient tracks. Yep, that fits the horror vibes of the region perfectly, no notes. And much like Stargazer, there's not much to say about any of them as tunes, but eh, I'll try. Sparkling Pendulum, I actually have a nitpick for. Given the crackling of electricity laced throughout this tune, I kind of feel like it should have replaced Energy Circuit instead of Jurassic FM and left the ladder in place. It fits much better with recursive transform arrays than depths. On the positive side, I do really like the bit of the main theme that creeps in towards the end. Which only reinforces my belief that this should play closer to Pebbles, but whatever. It works for what it is. Speaking of Pebbles, there's Wormpad, which plays as you enter the primary cortex. Which, yep, it fits. Scuffed blown out drone that's as ominous as its location would suggest. Nothing else to say, it just works. On the other hand, flicker. Oh, Flicker. Hello from the Robcon community, Barch. I wish your one contribution to Downforce OST wasn't, like, the least interesting song in the game. The most standard minimal drone imaginable. It fits the rock perfectly fine, but honestly, it's so devoid of flavor you could play it pretty much anywhere. It's not bad, per se, it's just nothing. Then there's Not Your Rain, which has at least a bit more going on. Like, I really like the main melodic loop of this one. It's eerie and chilly, perfect for the watery pipes of the cystic conduit, and there's lots of small details buried in the mix, too. It's minimal ambient, but there's at least a decent bit of personality to it. Though, it's nothing compared to... Quanda. Kanda? In game, it's the latter. On the OST, it's the former. Who really cares? It's the freakiest hell ambient track that plays in the scariest room in the game. A plus. I feel like they made the rod specifically so there'd be a region freaked up enough to actually deserve this nightmare of a song that sounds like the sum of all technology corrupting and dying. Jesus. It's also a bit much to, like, listen to on its own. Not a big noise fan here, but God is it effective for what it is. Okay, finally onto our first region that has, like, more than one real song to talk about. What could it possibly be? Oh, God damn it! You again? Again?
Yep, first proper region to go out in the original ranking, and first properly fully soundtracked region to go out in this one. And this time, it's for one simple reason. I don't understand what Farmer Raid's musical identity is supposed to be. Like, the region has a very strong visual aesthetic, so why is this musical aesthetic all over the place? I kind of suspect the region ended up being a dumping ground for songs they had already made, but didn't really know what to do with, rather than most of them being composed specifically for this region. It'd explain a lot anyways. And like the tunes themselves, they're pretty good. All that's left is probably the only song here that fully clicks in terms of synergizing with the vibe of Farmer Rays. There's an organic warmth to the Sims with an undercurrent of unsettling mixed in, which given this play is right past the gate from outskirts, it feels like a natural transition into Farmer Rays' gloomier atmosphere. And that's paired with the bloggy percussion evocative of the more industrialized nature of the region, like the silos themselves are being used as drums. Nesta Metal does do something similar. And you could kind of convince me it fits Farmer Rays because of that, especially with the metal thunking sounds, but other than that, nothing about it really screams Farmer Rays to me, either. The tune itself is pretty nice though, got a solid melody and some mellower vibes, it's not the most memorable song off the soundtrack or anything, but it's fine enough. And the metallic percussion of these last two songs is even more pronounced than Maze of Soil, which... is about as much as you can convince me this fits Farmer Rays because it's completely devoid of any sort of signs of life besides that. Feels way too brutalist and mechanical for the region. Almost pure percussion. Not even really a huge fan of the tune. The bass is weirdly heavy for Rain World. Even the threat themes don't go that hard in the bass. Oh, which speaking of... So, threat themes. They're really hard to consider for this ranking, because they're kind of omnipresent in the regions that have them, more of a gameplay element than environmental enhancements, and you tend to carry them more in bits and pieces. Different layers at different times, rather than the mostly full blast arrangements on the OST that are condensed to about two minutes of music. They're also kind of not very long loops of music, pretty repetitive, and thus not really something meant to be listened to on their own. But like, they are a big part of what sets a region's tone, so much so that their absence can do just as much to define a region's vibe as their presence can, and thus I do feel they're just as important as all the other kinds of tunes in the game. And on that note, man, Farmer Rays Threat Theme sure is a threat theme. Again, I have no clue what this has to do with any part of the region's aesthetic or atmosphere. It's got like aspects of Outskirts, Chimney Canopy, and Sky Island Threat Themes all in one, and it ends up sounding kind of generic as a result. It's totally solid, but I gotta be honest, until I started working on this video, I couldn't even remember what this one sounded like. And it certainly doesn't sound like Farmer Rays to me, much like... Uh... <sighs> Okay, first and foremost, Distance is great. Beautiful, dreamy vibes, a very welcoming sound that still has Rain World's signature undertones of gloominess. I like it a lot. Why the hell does it play in, of all places, the Scavenger Toll Room and Farmer Rays? What? Like, if anything, it sounds closest to all that's left, but the more specifically Outskirts could inside of that song. And spoilers, but Downpour did add the song to Outskirts, and it fits way better there. But for my money, its location in Farmer Rays is the single worst song placement in the entire game. I do not understand it even a tiny bit. Okay. Okay, two songs left to go. Let's get to this quickly. Reindeer Ride. Another one where I kind of get it, but it could also kind of just play anywhere and wouldn't really feel too out of place. There's a good number of songs just like this one in the Alpha's Gems and Junk soundtrack, including Nest and Metal, and all of them give me light drainage system vibes, honestly, but they're all nice enough tunes. This one plays in Hunter's starting room, so I guess it's kind of Hunter's intro music too. The last song here is also pretty much just cutscene music too, so...
It's called Emotion Thread, and I get emotional listening to it. What more could you ask for? I mean, it very specifically gives off the feeling of you are approaching the end of your journey, and you know what awaits you at its end, but you must press onwards anyways. And in that context, it's... Ugh, yeah. Pretty sure it's intentionally paralleling unseen lands, too, so... More than willing to give this a pass for working really well in context, even if nothing about it is particularly farmer easy to me. <sighs> Alright, that one took a bit. Let's pick up the pace a little and knock out the last quickie real quick. Yeah, Undergrove is another alternate version region that technically has five tracks, but three of them are used from Drainage, and the fourth is Weathered Steps, a song so short I'm considering it a bumper and not even including it here. Thankfully, the one song the region can call its own, they say, is the lovely slice of minimal ambient interspersed with nature sounds that beautifully matches the overgrown jungle aesthetic of the region. Also, it's a bit unusual in that, unlike literally any other song in the game, once it starts playing, it continues looping until you hit another music trigger, meaning that you can spend quite a long time hearing this one, making it a constant presence in the region, makes the place feel a lot less lonely. And while other regions definitely find atmosphere in their relative silence, I'm glad Undergrowth has this one unique quirk to call its own, even if it's not a tune I'd particularly seek out outside of the region. And here's where the segment should end, but frankly, one of those reused drainage songs I'm pretty sure was composed for Undergrowth first and foremost, so I'm gonna talk about it here instead. because, frankly, Undergrowth probably would have been a lot lower if I hadn't counted Breathing Hyometer here. It's a pleasant little tune that has a very tropical vibe to it that just slots in a lot better for Undergrowth than it does Drainage. It's the first of a handful of songs with what I'm going to call the Prog Fox synths. There's a very specific bright and plucky tone to them that he seems to like using, and hey, fun Prog Fox fact, I've actually listened to some of Ilo, the band he's in, and I'd like to imagine the name is a reference to the Prog Fox noise from The World Ends With You. Yay, foxes! But yeah, this one's a pleasant little tune that gives just that extra bit of life to the region. Okay, so the next three regions have a lot in common. They're ranked pretty much based on my favorite song from each of them, but they're a lot closer than you expect. So yeah, strap in for some more sewer structures, y'all. Due to just her sheer size, Moon ends up tied with two other regions for the most songs in the game, though with the caveat that two of those songs are Silicon and Silent Construct, reused from Sky Islands and Filtration Systems respectively. But like, that still leaves us with a lot to talk about. Take Random Fate for instance, which, I mean, it seems like it was composed as Moon's Random Gauze analog, it's got the same ethereal texture and the integration of the main theme, but it isn't used that way. It plays near her memory conflux. No, the actual Random Gauze analog is... Which, hmm, I'm conflicted on Reflection of the Moon. I don't think it doesn't work, but it's not as good a fit either. Rather than a constant humming drone, the song kind of fades back in and out a few times, which certainly fits with the constant gravity fluctuations within Moon, and the ticking clock is very ominous, but the lack of the main theme, or at least no matter how many times I've listened to it, I've never heard the main theme in it, just kind of like misses the point, right? I suppose it's really hard to recreate the effect of an essentially perfect song. It's certainly not as maximal or overwhelming, but it's still effective for what it is. But I still think Random Fate would have fit its role better. Because it's like a common random gods, more befitting of Moon's personality, while still sliding into the otherworldly, ominous atmosphere of an active superstructure just fine. I don't know, it's still no random gods, but I feel it more for sure. Anyways, there's also Moon's threat theme, which, wait, what? This 
this region has a threat theme? That's news to me. Like, it seems to play mostly in the vents, since the only threats inside Moon are the inspectors, but I uh, don't recognize this one at all, and it's pretty much just a lesser version of Pebble's threat theme too. Like, it fits the region, or at least inside the can, it's all right enough. I like the computery bloop bloops thrown in, and it's the right level of mellow for Moon, but it may as well not exist. I guess it's at least better than a song I actively dislike though. <laughs> Yeah, uh, when I was editing the original region ranking and actually properly listening to and processing glass arcs, I realized it kind of annoys me. The way it almost feigns being rhythmic, but doesn't seem to quite fit a stand on meter and interrupts itself every few seconds. Uh, I don't know, it kind of infuriates me. And it's a bit bright sounding for the dark, gloomy location it plays in, but otherwise, I can't say it doesn't fit the region. It's like a mellow ambient piece glitching out while still being at peace. That sure sounds like Moon to me. And the texture of the synths is nice too but uh, Flutter just does it better, so... Cause like, yeah, these kinds of, well, fluttery synths work better in brighter palettes like Luna's, even if the location itself is not as technological as its soundscape would suggest either. But the two do get along pretty well to give Moon's soundtrack a bit more cohesion, and Flutter makes no effort to be rhythmic like Glass Arcs, letting me simply just appreciate how nice the soundscapes themselves are. And once we climb to the top of this wall, we find... Obverse of the Old Wind, essentially Moon Stargazer analog, which is about 40 seconds long, and isn't really much of anything. It's barely more than a bumper, but given what it's supposed to parallel, I felt weird about not including it. It's, uh, got a bit more going on than Flicker, at least. Doesn't really have the same impact of Stargazer, though. Mostly, I'm kind of just mad that such a cool song title was wasted on such a nothing bit of audio. Anyways, before we leave this region behind, let's crash all the way back down to the bottom for one last tune. Escapeless Doubt is, uh, probably my favorite song in the region, too. Starting off as just some spooky ambience before developing a main melody that sends chills down my spine every time. Until the percussion creeps in to give the tune more of a mechanical pulse the more you ascend towards Moon. It's the slow burn of a song that pays off really well and fits Moon's dress remarkably well, yeah. Shame that our supports are about to come crashing down into the ocean, then. Yep, if you saw my original region ranking, you know how much I love this goddamn place, so it kinda hurts to put it this low, but like, I mean, the soundtrack is not the S word that made me an SS fan, <laughs> but no, the tunes here, they're solid. A bit hit or miss on how well they fit with the region, I suppose. Like, say, random fate showing up again and not really fitting for a completely dead superstructure, but whatever. Ascent, though, yeah, I can dig it. Works wonderfully as entrance music for Submerged. Dark, drowned, and lifeless, the sounds of waves mixing with the ambience, yeah, nails the spooky deep ocean vibes of the region pretty much perfectly. Not exactly a standout ambient tune, but I like it well enough for what it is, and for a similarly watery tune. Actually, hmm, is it really? Like, the title was suggested, but honestly, Aquaphobia feels a bit out of place in Submerged, or hell, in the soundtrack as a whole. It gives me garbage waste files more than anything, but I don't know, it plays in a weird spot right near the heart, too. And, like, don't get me wrong, the tune itself is fairly memorable, both on its own merits and for how out of step with the rest of the OST it is, though it's also a bit short, more of an underdeveloped idea than a full song, but eh. I'd say I'm still more positive than that on this one, despite my gripe. It at least fits the region better than, uh... 
Like, again, Flux is a pretty solid tune. The main melody is quite strange and kind of unnerving. The ticking percussion adds some tension and it builds a bit of a groove as it goes along. It'd be a perfect fit for, uh, Looks to the Moon before she got submerged. It's definitely not as out of place on the OC as Lacophobia anyways, but it just feels too lively for the gloomy, watery spot it plays in. The snowy songs and Bitter Airy though? Yeah, they fit just fine. Expedition Complete music, what the hell are you doing here? Like, yeah, I can't hear this song as anything else now, but in Garden's Defense, it's the perfect song to convey the feeling of, oh my god, it's snowing. A victory lap in a winter wonderland, super dreamy and pleasant vibes, doesn't have a lot of meat on its bones, but I like it a lot for what it is. But yeah, Fragile is better. Cause like, for one, that melody is just really nice. It conveys both a chilly atmosphere and also a sort of like, loneliness. It's a very lonely tune, one that sounds like a long journey through a harsh blizzard, but a journey you know you can push through. It's kinda cute even. Again, pretty short, but I couldn't really ask it to do more than it does. And last but not least, what lies even beyond the submerged superstructure. Onto a New Dawn. What a wonderful piece of music. There's something triumphant and kind of majestic about it, while still undercut by ominous shadows. Breaking all the way through to the other side of Moon, finding another shoreline, the easternmost dream in all of Rain World, as the sea stretches out endlessly into the distance. That's exactly what the song sounds like to me, carrying both the excitement and the anxiety that comes with the dawning of a new adventure. And if there is anywhere else I want to see explored more, it's exactly that, whatever lies beyond the shoreline. Hell, it's not unlikely the eastern retaining wall collapsed when Moon fell, letting so much more ocean wash into the flooded remains of the waterfront facility. I want to know what's beyond that. And this song, well, it'd be a great welcome to that new horizon, should it ever come to fruition. Anyways, we've been talking about Moon for quite a while now, and I'm worried I'm making Pebbles feel left out, so... You already know exactly why this region's as high as it is, and yes, we will be getting to it soon, but let's run through what the rest of the region has to offer. And like with the rot, it's mostly a lot of atmospheric ambience. Though Indra's Pad has gotta be one of my favorites in that category. It's both strangely pleasant, dreamlike and calming, while also having an ominous undercurrent to it. Perfectly encapsulates how it feels to visit Pebbles for the first time and suddenly just be floating about in zero G. The melodic loop here also gives it a lot more personality than most of the other ambient tracks in the game. It's just really lovely stuff. You know what's not lovely? Thread themes. Much like I didn't realize Moon had a threat theme until this video, I didn't realize Pebbles had one either until the original region ranking. It's like, you can kind of hear it, but it's so phased out and mechanical compared to the rest that you can forgive me for not realizing it was supposed to be one, right? It's pretty cool for what it is though, much more alien than most other threat themes, and it's got those sharp noises tearing through it every now and then. I dig that both Moon's and Pebbles threat themes are messed up in very different ways that both fit their regions well. This one's just got a lot more going on and is way spookier to listen to. Spooky in the same way Pebbles other ambiences, too. Not much to say about Energy Circuit. It's got a very electric sound that fits in pretty well with its position in recursive transformer rays, and beyond that, yep, sure adds atmosphere to the region, alright. Same goes for Drastic FM. <laughs> which frankly just sounds like bass boosted energy circuit to me, which considering its theme of unfortunate development, yeah, it's as freaky as it would need to be. So much so that I find it super unpleasant to actually like listen to, but I can't really fault it either. It's a fricked up tune for a fricked up area. Okay, now that everything else is out of the way, it's finally time. Please rise for the Rain World National Anthem.
James Primate literally said, I am going to make the best video game song of all time, and then he sat down and did it, and then everyone agreed that he did. Not really, but like, it's damn close. Like, come on, this song even sounds good played on goddamn kazoo. <laughs> It sounds good in, uh, Orca, whatever that is. There's alternate mixes of it that play in the ride in Metropolis that you barely even get to hear, and yet they're just as beautiful in their own ways. And the song itself just perfectly conveys the wonder and surrealism of the General Systems bus, as well as fear. As you scurried your way through the rot infected halls of pebble structure, past the exposed electrical arrays, through the maze of the memory conflux, a long, hard fought journey up a mechanical mountain just to reach the random god at its peak. Look, there's an entire video essay on why this song is as impactful as it is, and I'm not gonna do this song better justice than that in this short little segment, so just go watch that for the full story. All I will say is that Random Gods isn't just excellent for Rain World isn't just excellent for video game music in general, it's just plain excellent. It single-handedly vaulted an otherwise fairly musical mediocre region up this high on the list, and there's only one song in the entire game I like more than it. And on that topic, it's time to take stock of what we have left. We've purged all the superstructures, we've purged all the regions of only a few songs to their name, and we've purged the only region whose soundtrack just doesn't fit its vibes. All of the remaining 13 regions have genuinely strong soundtracks that do a lot to elevate their atmosphere, and I like them all a lot. Unfortunately, one of them has had to get the short end of the stick, and thus... I will say up front that, in terms of pure vibe, Shaded Citadel is the strongest region in the game. Its entire soundtrack is wonderfully nocturnal, punctuated by undercurrents of the horrors that lurk in its deepest, darkest corridors. It's only really let down by a lot of the tunes themselves just not being the best or most interesting to listen to on their own. That's, of course, not true of Black Moonlight, which is just lovely and ethereal and delightfully mellow. It's very cozy ambience that sounds like the sunset giving way to the darkness of the night, stars shedding down from the heavens, a very comfortable darkness darkness. Given that the upper parts of Shaded are honestly pretty chill and comfy, yeah, this is a perfect welcome to Shaded. And as we go deeper in, its ambience gets even more understated. Dripping Time is almost like the Rainwood version of a lullaby. There's something really warm and cozy about that melody, even as it's filtered through mechanical distortions, but it still has the vibes of a chill, dreamy night all the same. Far more ambience than proper songs, sure, but weirdly pleasant all the same. As for the rest of the region's ambience, well, a lot of it feels more like theme song of specific creature than anything. Case in point. <laughs> The percussion representing the pitter-patter of lantern mice scurrying about, mixed with a kind of goofy and cute melody, they are adorable little buggers after all. Admittedly, this one's in such a weird, out-of-the-way spot, I rarely ever come across it on my own, but I have no complaints about it, it's nice. Then there's Theme of Mole Lizards. Yes, haha, Sussamogus, get your yucks out of the way, anyways. The almost, like, stringy sound of Dark Sus makes me think of the Mole Lizard's whiskers, so yeah, I think it works. I can almost imagine this is what the world sounds like to a Mole Lizard, different sounds phasing in and out as their hypersensitive hearing picks up absolutely everything. It's a neat vibe, albeit not much more than Amius that slots right in the shaded just fine. Much like, uh, theme of spiders.
and by god is demonic riser as terrifying as it should be because those things are fricked up it's incredibly effective ambience not exactly you know much of a tune but the scurrying of thousands of tiny legs blending together to sound almost like a storm headed straight towards you god does it ever invoke sheer terror in you not that i'd you know choose to listen to it ever please get me the hell out of here but man is it good for what it is but once we get past the spiders past all the other threats lurking in the darkness and break on through to the other side of shaded we're greeted with Flows has gotta be up there in terms of the most iconic songs in the game for me. Not only because, frankly, I usually come to Shaded from Shoreline instead of vice versa, and it plays a lot in the arena mode too, and frankly, I feel it does work better as an approaching Shaded song rather than a leaving Shaded one, where gentle ambience gives way to harsh synths that are strangely catchy despite that. Black Moonlight is welcoming, but that's a bit misleading. Flows starts off welcoming, but tells you to be wary, which you'll need to be. And it's just a damn cool tune too. But alas, all things must come to an end. It's time to wake up from a good night's rest and go back to work in the city. Lost City. God, another one of my faves. It's both perfect for the looming dread you feel at the thought of exploring a literal post-apocalyptic city, as well as the drive and determination of Artificer as it closes in on its own journey's end. Dawn of the final act music if I've ever heard it. The moment I hear those first drum hits and the song really kicks in, it feels like my heart stops. Also, it's one of, if not the only song in the entire game I can think of that uses brass, or at least brass-like since, no, Kayava doesn't count, that's a saxophone, saxophones are woodwinds, music nerd emoji, anyways. It's just so so striking. Easily the best song on the Downpour OST and one of the best tunes in the game. It fits Artificer's journey perfectly. I love it and cry over it. Wait, wait, I mean, uh, right, Metropolis. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, this region's soundtrack is good. Most of the tunes fit right in and most of them are pretty dang cool tunes. It's not the strongest on either of those fronts, but that's why it's right in the middle. And it has a pretty dope threat themes. Like, there's a very busy urban vibe to this one, and the way it builds in game as the threat level rises works super well for the region. The low swell of what sounds like a train horn often being your first warning of impending danger. It's also got a fluttering melodic loop going on that gives it its more daytime feel compared to the night theme. Which, speaking of, <clears throat> gee, Metropolis, how come mamas you have two threat themes? Yeah, while Metropolis isn't the only region to have variations of a threat theme, it's the only one to get two whole soundtrack spots for it, though like, I kinda get it. They've both got some of the same underlying feel and elements, but the vibes are way different. The night theme is less melodic, more ominous, just sounds more nocturnal. Pretty sure it plays in the darker spots of the floor in the House of Braids too, which are probably the only spots I've actually heard it in. I definitely prefer the day theme, but they're both good threat themes that fit the region well. Oh, and speaking of the lower regions of Metropolis, there's a few ambient pieces that play there. Phasing plays in the one brightly lit room at the western end of the underground train tunnel in the floor, you know, the one of the train shelter, and hmm, I sort of get it as like a ray of light breaking through the darkness, but at the same time, it's kind of nocturnal too. A nice warm darkness. Very pleasant, lush waves of synths that are unhealthily pretty. Feels more like something that would fit better in Outer Expanse, honestly. But I like it a lot more than Dust Cloud anyways. Yeah, this one's a very normal dark ambient piece that I can't say doesn't fit the dark, ominous lower entrance of the House of Braids, but like, the tune itself doesn't have much to it. Barely more than Flicker. And it could play pretty much anywhere that needed dark moody ambience and not really feel out of place. Don't mind having it around, but not particularly notable either. Though, amusingly, it and our last Metropolis song share something in common.
so many clouds here despite the city being built above them. Weird. Anyways, Grey Cloud. This is an arena mode song. Not a song that just so happens to play in arena mode, a song that belongs in arena mode and not in the main game. Like this, Slaughter, Noisy, Rooftops, Wayoon, all these sound a bit too video gamey for lack of a better term. There's a reason none of these were in the game to begin with and I kind of wish the downpour devs realized that and let them be. Like, I get why Grey Cloud was chosen for where it plays. It's got that same random gods that wall of synthetic fuzz. It's basically just random gods of percussion. It's very befitting of the surrealism that the abandoned labs of the House of Braids can give off. Except it plays not inside the house, but on the long bridge right before it. Come on, man. Like, the tune itself is really good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't like it being part of the world itself. All right, we've got to head back below the clouds now, but not like too far below. Honestly, considering how little music Chimney Canopy actually has to its name, it does a damn fine job of what it does have. Save for its ground floor from hell, the region tends to feel rather lonely, and Wind Chimes perfectly captures that feeling, especially if we're playing as you begin your long climb upwards. It's another song in the token alpha gems and junk sound, a mellow tune with a swingy rhythm to it, and it might be among my favorites of them, maybe because I hear it a ton, but the melody sticks out more than usual and the groove feels tighter too. It's a neat little tune. And it actually has a sister within this very region too. And admittedly, I don't feel as strongly about this one, probably because I don't go this way as often, but it's got a lot of the same vibes and the same temperature of the percussion, but the tune itself doesn't stand out as much. And I can kind of say the same about its location. I get what they're doing having it play in the tower room on the east side of the floor, but if they'd moved it over just a room or two to the indoors area near the gutter, paralleling where wind chimes plays, it'd fit a bit better. Oh, and while we're speaking about the gutter... Okay, well the Chimney Canopy Threat theme is technically what we're talking about here, but since I already gave my thoughts on it in the last region ranking, that being that it's very good, one of my favorite threat themes, and a perfect fit for the region, I figured I'd throw a bunch of the gutters very into the theme. Not that it's all that different, mostly just changing the base and vox layers to something more befitting of its subterranean swampy atmosphere. The steam gusts and fluttery synths are still present, but the changing backbone makes it feel a lot gloomier, like we're sludging through sewers of industrial waste. Which is, I mean, yeah, we are. Gross. And while I'm on the subject of praising one of my least favorite areas in the game. I'm actually kind of mad that an area as trash as the gutter gets an ambient piece as effective as cracked earth because Jesus. The drones are ominous yet kind of pleasant, but the creaking and snapping sound effects throughout make the whole thing really unsettling, fitting in perfectly with the dank, grimy zone. Honestly, I feel like they might have made the gutter solely to justify having this song in the game because nowhere else in Rain World, not even the gloomiest parts of Subterranean, were quite the right kind of melancholy, grungy, and unnerving to deserve it. Alright, fine, I was wrong. I guess the gutter's not quite that that bad after all. Oh, and speaking of subterranean... Subterranean is another region with such a strong musical identity that I can't help but compare other regions' tunes to it. Its earthy and percussive tones are a perfect fit for its gloomy, dank maze of caverns, and how that gets flipped on its head as you dig deeper, well, we'll get to that later, but unlike, say, Shaded, Subterranean also has a good number of standout tunes to its name. I'm not sure that Deep Energy is high on that list, admittedly. It's a weirdly mellow tune for the big scary hole of death and despair, but as a first dive on the Subterranean type beat, it works pretty well. It's not much more than its one melodic loop with slight variations, but I still like it plenty. It's pretty iconic anyways, though not quite as much as...
Grumble Bum is a very goofy sounding song, but I kind of get it. It's almost got the sound of like the long dead voices of ancients continuing to echo infinitely throughout its caves. And specifically, the lower cave loop that I tend to avoid like to play because it's always chock full of centipedes. Eek. Though I suppose it's fitting because this also has like vague threat theme vibes to it. It's what I'd imagine a subterranean threat theme would sound like anyways. As for the song itself, it's fine. I don't know. I've never actually been as hot on the tune itself. It's mostly percussion and lacks for a strong melodic element if you ask me. Though I swear I hear a main theme integration in it towards the end that, given its placement right before the end of the game, feels pretty dang appropriate. Anyways, hopping all the way towards the easternmost side of Subterranean, we find... Which, yeah, as a transitional piece out of Shoreline into Subterranean, it works. Yup, got both the same kind of percussive timber as the latter and the ocean sounds and watery vibe of the former. It's not much to listen to, kinda lumpy and tuneless, but doing too much to really be called pure ambience either. It's fine, but I never really notice it. Leviathan Cave, on the other hand, stands out at least a bit more. Like, this one is just so smart. It's got gloomy subterranean vibes, but you can also hear the creaking and groaning metal filtration systems in the background, foreshadowing what lies below. It's, again, a bit minimal as a tune, but it's a beautiful piece of atmosphere. And let's hop right on over to filtration while we're on the subject. Silent Construct, which they definitely named the region after, only to not include it in the region itself, amusingly, is just, uh, okay. If I could give songs extra credit for fitting the region, I absolutely would with this one because it may well be the single best song in the entire game in that regards. It's such an effective piece of raw ambience that I legitimately didn't realize it was a song. I just thought it was part of Filtration's atmosphere outright. Perfectly haunting for the deepest, darkest, most dangerous tunnels in all of Five Pebbles' facility. Yikes. As a song, it's not really one, but god do I love it anyways. And once we wind our way through the grim red darkness, we emerge into the depths where... Yeah, of course, more echo music coming right up, but like with Rubicon, I think both the ones that play here are used marvelously. Else one in particular feels so much more majestic than any of the other echo themes, and is a perfect fit for the sacred temples of the depths and other worldly environment that feels so unlike anything else in the game. And it's a very pretty ambient piece besides that, probably my favorite echo theme to listen to on its own. And once we get past the Guardians, there's one last tune accompanying our final trek to the Void Sea. A much sparser, lonelier tune, perfectly befitting of the looming dread that awaits, but also the looming relief of freedom from the eternal cycle of life and death as the world itself unravels around you the further you go. And yeah, it's a solid piece of ambience besides. And that is it for Subterranean, or it would have been until Donbar happened. Man, Orange Lizard feels so familiar to me that I'm kinda surprised it's not base game. I swear I've heard this one a lot though, and I barely even go this way. Also, I'm not sure what this has to do with Orange Lizards at all. That aside, god, this is such a good tune. By far the coolest subterranean tune while also slotting perfectly into its established aesthetic. A moody motif delivered through chilly synths, blocky percussion that picks up a bit of a rattling effect as it goes on, the sounds of water droplets from the roof of the cave landing in pools of stagnant water, an ominous low drone filling out the mix. It's both kinda pleasant and kinda spooky at the same time. That's what Rain World tends to be like on the whole, innit? And while we're on the subject of both Downpour and Dank Dark Mazes, might as well throw in Pipe Yard too. Pipe Yard's kind of the opposite of Subterranean, in that, like with Farmer Rays, it doesn't do a great job establishing a musical identity, though it does a better job than that region for sure, but it makes up for that by just having all the tunes be jams and a half. Yeah, this is the first region where I feel fairly positive towards every last song here, and we're starting much as the game itself does with... 
Rain? Okay, look, this is a good song. Probably the best version of that one Prog Fox song. Looping melody underscored by mellow percussion and some spookier bass as the song goes along. And it does kind of sound like there's a gentle patter of rain throughout. And while I can't really articulate why I think this one fits Pop Yard well, mostly because Pop Yard still kind of lacks an identity, I'm just going on vibes with this one. Trust me, bro. I do think it's a good fit and a very welcoming tune for the zone. I quite like it. Mostly I'm just pissed that it's called Rain. What? Why does this song in particular get to be Rain from Rain World? I gave a pass to Not Your Rain for at least being kinda cheeky, but it's so arbitrary for such an unspecial song. And while I'm being annoying, go away, rooftops. I already went on my spiel about the inclusion of arena mode coded songs like this, I'll spare you a second one, but all of that rings true for this one too. I don't think this should be in the world proper, and I really don't understand why it was picked for Pipe Yard specifically. Nothing about it screams Pipe Yard. The tune itself though, yeah, it's nice. It's a mellower arena mode song, chirpy melody paired with a rumbling bass counterpoint that's not as egregiously out of place as some of the other arena mode tunes, though it's also not exactly the first one that comes to mind out of the bunch either. It's solid. Anyways, I need to hear a song that really fits this environment or I'm gonna lose my mind, please. Oh yeah, Fragments. This one works really damn well as ambience for a pop yard's spookier lower zone. Bells paired with incredibly lush waves of synths, it's quite beautiful. And it creates an air of mystery, too, a sense of fear of the unknown. It maybe invokes Outer Expanse slightly more than it does pop yard, I guess, but that's nitpicking. Doesn't mean I don't love the tune. Anyways, I've put it off long enough. Show me your threat theme, pop yard. I feel like all the new downpour threat themes had to be special snowflakes to stand out amidst the existing themes, so this one is basically, hey, what if the wet and moist was a threat theme? Or, I guess, a very drainage system sounding threat theme? Whatever it is, the tune itself is admittedly a jam. Granted, when you have all the layers going on at once, it can also be a bit busy. Very manly percussion, the heavy bass, the fluttery ascending synths, what almost sounds like a sitar filling out the mix, and the whooping alarm sound punctuating every bar, there's a lot going on. Which kind of fits Papillard, a region that both tends to be fairly lively in its creature spawns and also made of a drainage system-esque pipes. And the way it sounds is probably the only reason why Veil North Star's inclusion in Pop Yard is in any way excusable, so... <laughs> Cause like, I get what they were doing here. Some tunnel is kind of an analog to the maze of pipes under shoreline, and the captain plays in there, so a remake of it that also has some of the pipe yard threat theme mixed in, it could work, in theory. In practice, well, that's contingent on the captain also working where it plays, which, well, we'll get to it later. But even for how much they tried to make this one work, I don't think it does. Which is a shame because Veil vale North Star is, uh, fantastic. You can keep your Kayabas and your captains, this is the bop of the game to me. The drum groove on this thing is killer. Man, and the way the rest of the instruments fill out the mix and the tunes themselves are all catchy as all sin, it's just an absolute delight to listen to. I'm glad Randall has some completely inexplicable bops, even if I'm mixed about their inclusion in the world itself. Man, that last region prompted a lot of messy, complicated discussions. Let's keep it simple for this next one, shall we? Outskirts is a- uh, oh shoot, the song's already half over, quick! <clears throat> Unseen Lands is a brief, just barely over bumper length tune, but a very iconic one. Likely the first song the player hears in-game, a warm but melancholic welcome to the world of Rain World. Still gets me a little emotional every time I hear it. Right, had to get that out of the way before talking about the region itself, which I will now do to the tune of Urban Jungle. Right, 
that's better. Outskirts, where it all begins. Where Rainworld firmly establishes as many parts of its identity as it can fit into a fairly small, fairly vanilla region. And frankly, all Outskirts really needed to do to prove itself was to inspire a sense of unease in the player, whilst invoking scenes of nature overtaking rusted industrial landscapes, which I'm proud to announce it succeeds at with flying colors. Take for example, Urban Jungle, a song I went down and ran about in another video because, dear god, this is handily the longest song on the OST and it doesn't quite earn its length. Considering the active gameplay impediment it can become to new players. It's split into two halves, the first being a glitchy, droning ambient piece, the second gaining a pulse and becoming a low-key bop that still carries over the spooky vibes from its ambient first half. And I'm kinda left wondering why it isn't, like, a minute at most of that ambience before getting to the real song, cause like, even for as iconic as it is, even for as nifty a tune as it is, it does kinda drag. No real complaints beyond that. It sets the tone for the rest of the game really damn well, it feels like the first sign a new player gets that there's something wrong with this world, and that something wrong might be the first lizard to snap them up in its jaws while the foundational threat theme blares in the background. Hey, it's the most iconic threat theme in the game. It's the reason why slow cats go wow wow now for some reason. And it fits perfectly with Oscar's aesthetic while still having that right level of danger to it. Those heavy percussive hits especially go pretty dang hard, and that bass is gnarly, man. It's probably helped by the soundtrack presenting this threat theme so much better than most of the others, and it's not my favorite of the bunch by any stretch, but like, I'm always gonna find it a little bit endearing nonetheless. And we wrap up our discussion of Oscar's with, uh, um, hmm. Proxima is an ambient song in Rainworld, all right. I, uh, the insect sounds baked into the ambience kind of justifies its location in outskirts, I guess. And it feels a bit too ominous for us so early in the game, though new players don't tend to go this way, so it's, well, frankly, it's another song that feels like it could go pretty much anywhere and not feel out of place. Doesn't really scream outskirts, doesn't have much to it, screw it, this is a lame note to end the region on, let's talk about distance again, for real this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm breaking my own rule here, but hell with it. The most misplaced song in the game finally got placed correctly, and I couldn't be happier. Downpour added a whole new part of Outscratch for Spearmaster, and any slug guide who can access that or expanse, to explore behind Survivor and Monk's spawn, and let me tell you, emerging from the dim red of the facility roots and the dank, dark maze of pipes into the brightly lit outskirts skies, that's exactly the moment Distance was always meant to soundtrack. It hits different, man. And we're still not done, because finally, we've got our first of Saints Replacement songs. Yeah, uh, so all the Saint replacement songs are not only perfect matches for the snowy, wintry world that Saint explores, but almost without exception, better than the songs they replace, too. Frosted Festival in particular replacing Unseen Lands and kind of inheriting its purpose, so to speak. Like, with how comfy Outskirts becomes to longtime players, this cozy, icy little tune fits it really dang well, yeah. It's very cute and sparkly and pleasant. Got the vibes of like, ooh, it's snowing outside, snow day, snow day, yippee! Truly, we are walking in a winter wonderland. But that's another time, another place. As for the Slugcats that follow the Overseer, their journey will take them all the way from the lonely outskirts to the vast, endless ocean. Shoreline is another region where I don't really have much to say about its musical identity overall, because the tunes pretty much just do their jobs well while also being plenty good on their own. Only the returning Veil vale North Star, a song that, for the record, shows up thrice in this list, will be singing it again in Waterfront Facility. That and its sibling, The Captain, are the only two songs that don't really fit the region or, well, the game's atmosphere all that well. A lot of the other tunes kind of just skirt by on their watery vibes, often with the sounds of waves mixed in for good measure. Like Lone Sound, for example. Another one in the minimal, kind of groovy pile of the alphas, gems, and junk style, with a luxury layer of melancholic ambience underlining it that makes it just super relaxing, almost like white noise. If you ignored the loud bass and quiet percussion giving it a bit of a pulse, honestly, I might have liked this more if it was just pure ambient, but it's a nice enough tune all the same. And you know what, since I already mentioned it, let's get some blah blah up in here. <laughs> Grant, 
granted, I basically already reviewed the captain back when I talked about Vale Northstar because it's got all the same strengths and weaknesses. A cool groove paired with a catchy tune, a unique sound to it, blah blah and all, but it's also just way too much of a jam for the relatively low energy melancholic atmosphere of the game and especially the completely random pipe under shoreline that it exists in. Like, if I squint at it, I can kind of argue that it sounds like voices echoing through the tunnels and there's a watery undercurrent of ambience throughout, but that already feels like a stretch. And yes, expect me to be annoying by this when Kayava comes up too. That being said, the captain's my least favorite of the three anyways. It's still quite good, and I particularly like the little break in the middle where the progression drops out, but I'll always pick Veil Northstar over it, so... As for something Shoreline has the best version of... Hello, best threat theme in the game, how are ya? Like, this one's just so strikingly different from the other early game threat themes. It's got a different rhythm to it, it's more melodic, both that supremely catchy main loop, it's just a jam and a half. You hear the song play and you know you're in for a bad time, but you're also too busy grooving along in the care. And that central motif, played on a watery synth, completely sells the shoreline vibes of this one by itself, which honestly tends to be all a good threat theme needs. One element that sets it in line with the region's vibe. It's just a really good threat theme and a really good tune, period. Oh, and hey, we made it to Moon! Finally! Not that there's much to say about Moondown, it sure is the main theme phased out to represent Moon's barely functional state while also instilling a feeling of familiarity in the player, one that makes you feel cozy and safe. There's definitely a sentimental value to it. In isolation, it's not much to sniff at, but it works well enough for what it needed to be that I can hardly complain. I mean, Random Gods is just a main theme variation too, so... And complimenting it as another kinda glitchy ambient piece. New Terra is a song I always forget about because it's in kind of a weird place, more of a traditional tune as you move from shoreline to subterranean, and it's watery and gloomy enough to fit in both, and beyond that, it's not exactly something I find interesting to listen to. Not much in the way of a tune here, it's just serviceable for what it needs to be. It takes a lot to make an ambient track stand out, and this one just doesn't. But that's fine because Fast and Life has its back. Fast and Life. What a provocative title. But, like, considering it plays in Frigid Coast, the lead up to the bleakest parts of Stain's campaign, where most of the creatures in the sea have frozen to death and been replaced by Myra's vultures hounding the sky, yeah, it's kinda chilling, isn't it? And by god, if this isn't just one of, if not the most emotionally evocative piece of ambient in the game. It's impressive how this many layers of gorgeously lush synth texture can convey such a feeling of emptiness. It's beautiful in the way that, like, a raging fire is. The kind of beauty that only comes at the cost of life. I don't even really know how to describe how it makes me feel. All I know is that it gives me goosebumps every time I listen to it. So, so good. And hey, remember last time when I ranked Waterfront Facility right below Shoreline? Oh, how the turns have tabled. I'm not gonna bury the lead. The Coast is the reason why Waterfront is this high up. The Coast is the best song on the entire soundtrack, and it's not particularly close, actually. Like, I don't know how to describe the way it sounds other than, well, otherworldly. Ocean ambience paired with some of the coziest, gloomiest, warmest sense of melodies out there. It's like the feeling of knowing that everything is gonna be alright in the end, no matter how things might seem right now. It's so relaxing. Like, there's a reason I use this as a cooldown song after the big climax on the end of Rain World, is all I'm saying. And knowing the song's untapped potential, the downpour team went, okay, so here's the best song in the game that isn't actually in the game. Let's, you know, put it in the game like it always should have been, which is objectively the best change they made in the entirety of the downpour DLC, and I will hear no argument to the contrary. And that in mind, I, I hate doing this, but... <sighs> The Coast is a Shoreline song, not a Waterfront Facility song. It doesn't not fit Waterfront, given the region still has some oceany vibes, but I don't know. I can't even really blame the Downpour team for that. It's a mistake that the song wasn't in the game to begin with, and I'd rather have it here than not, because I genuinely love it as a piece of music, period, much less as a video game song. Uh, oh, right, I have the rest of the region to discuss. Uh, trust the component next, sure.
Okay, so brief aside to acknowledge that Waterfront also reuses new Terra, which whatever, and Veil vale Northstar, which probably also raises its score despite how unfitting the tune is, but otherwise most of what it adds is just new tunes for the precipice. One of those being Trusted Component, which is another in the Prog Fox sound, this one having a bit more focus on its glitchy melody percussion than the actual melody itself. It's pleasant though, maybe a bit too cozy for uh the crumbling bridge at the top of the precipice, or the precipice at all, but given the brighter skies up this high I guess I can see it. Then there's Metal Canopy which plays a bit lower down. which definitely fits the precipice a lot better, while still carrying over a lot of the same metal percussion as Trusted Component. Lots of unsettling little flutters in the mix, too, like you can hear the metal groaning and creaking as it's strained nearly to breaking. The actual tune tune part of the song is solid enough, though it doesn't last very long and just gives way to more percussive ambience after. I kinda wish there was a bit more to the song, but whatever, it's nice. Oh, and remember when I said Shoreline had the best threat theme? Yeah, I lied, kind of. This is just not fair. Let's take what's already the best and arguably the most popular threat theme of the base game and remix it to be even better. It's like textbook iteration, no not that kind. Takes the best part of the original Shoreline threat theme, that watery melodic loop, and builds a whole new but still recognizable tune around it that's a much better fit for the more industrial setting of Waterfront. It's like if Shoreline and Chimney had a baby. Both the region itself and its threat theme, really. And the tune itself, ugh, the blockier, snappier percussion, the rolling bass line, the scratchy, brushy effects that sound both like waves and gusts of steam at the same time time, the choppy distorted synth that's as catchy as it is unsettling, all mixed in with that same familiar groove and tune. Yeah, it's kinda just the perfect threat theme. On to the top 5 then. It's funny that, for how different the metrics were for both of my region rankings, there's quite a bit of overlap in these upper spots. And by sheer happenstance, the 5th best region of the game also ended up having the 5th best soundtrack of the bunch. Considering how many times I've already referenced this region's music in other segments of this video, it should come as no surprise that Drainage is up this high. It's got like, the defining gloomy and dank sound of the game. One way Outskirts and Drainage do make a good pair is that the former is what it sounds like when the wildlife wants to kill you, and the latter is what it sounds like when the world itself is your biggest enemy. And entering from Outskirts, we hear Mud Pit's easily the most iconic Drainage song. Hell, the song is Drainage Systems to me. The pluggy percussion that sounds like water droplets, the ominous minimal atmosphere, the organic meets mechanical sound just perfectly captures the vibes. And it's weirdly catchy too? I think it is anyways, and a lot cozier than something like, say, Old Growth. This is one of the few songs in the game that's like, genuinely glitchy and unsettling, which well, Drainage feels like a weird spot for that in particular, even if it otherwise fits. Like, I guess, a malfunctioning sewer system that's decaying and breaking down more and more as the rains get more intense? Whatever the reason, the vibes are immaculate and it really sets me on edge every time I hear it, so... Oh, and in a similarly gloomy lane... God, Drainage just has such a cohesive aesthetic, and such a pleasant one despite how low-key and minor-key the tunes themselves are. Swaying fronds, glassy synths, and mellow, blocky percussion set the mood for the track filtration really damn well, and I don't know what else to say about it other than that I like it a lot. Let's just scurry right along to the one I know y'all have been waiting for, the moist one. The Wet and Moist is a very funny song title, and also an infuriating one, I'm sure. Moist. I'm just gonna keep saying that word until everyone hates me. Anyways, The Wet and Moist is, like, exactly what a sewer level in a gloomy game like Rain World should sound like. Bassy, watery, and melancholic. Almost has, like, the sound of flowing water baked into the mix, too, with those descending synths that show up after the bass drops out. The funny thing about Drainage as a whole is, like, nothing about any of its tunes are particularly exceptional, they're just all quite nice and all fit the region really damn well. Well, save for Breathing Hyometer, which we already 
already covered way back in Undergrowth. It's the region that pretty much sets the standard for what a region in Rainworld should sound like. Unfortunately for Drainage, the last four regions we have yet to cover have far and away exceeded that standard, so sky high above all the others that, oh, you already know where this is going. Sky Islands being this high makes sense because its bright palette and sky high location lead to a ton of cozy, dreamy vibes that I'm biased towards enjoying. Take, for example, Lovely Arps, a song which is, in fact, quite lovely. That ascending arpeggio mixed with all sorts of subtler layers of ambience gives it that dreamy, kind of surreal vibe. It's the perfect level of mellow for your first steps in the Sky Islands. Honestly, I feel like this one in particular is the vibe Prof Fox tried to recreate a lot with his aforementioned sounds, yet never quite reached the level of the original. Not a diss against that style, just there's something special about this one that, say, Breathing Hyometer, Rain, etc. never quite recapture. And Lovely Arps is just a really good tune on top of being a great fit for Sky Islands. Can't quite say the same for the threat theme, sadly. Though, in all honesty, I'm like 90% certain this one's a casualty of how badly the soundtrack presents it. Full blast the entire time, which never flatters threat themes. And it's not like the tune itself isn't at least pretty solid. I find it more memorable than Farmer Ray's or Moon's threat themes. But it's also, like, not a great fit for Sky Islands. It's weirdly menacing for the region's vibe. I guess it fits with how challenging the region can be. There's at least, like, a communication tower or Morse code thing going on on the quieter layers, though. But, uh, I'd better leave that job to the songs that actually play in those towers. And speaking system sure does sound like a communication error from a long dormant machine. Yep, I don't know, there's not really much to this one. Very minimal and bright, but not much more than a bit of ambience to keep you company. It's fine. Moving up the chain, we have Crystalline. A song I, uh, barely ever hear because, man, this is in a weird spot. I only ever go in this room when I'm heading to the Echo, and it can't play when the Echo's around, so... But, yeah, another one that sounds like a jumbled signal mixed with dreamy layers of synths, a bit of an unsettling vibe to it, too. I like it more than Speaking Systems, if nothing else, but my favorite of the trio has gotta be... Yeah, Silicon is... man, there's something about that really lonely melody that's like super reminiscent of Knit Underground, and I kind of love that. It's very befitting of what's gotta be one of the loneliest corners in Rain World, the top of the westernmost tower that you have almost no reason to go to unless you're hunting pearls. It's almost too dreary for Sky Islands, honestly. Would fit much better somewhere much less warm, and oh, you know where I'm going with this. Honestly, Chillblade and Grace is another tune that's almost like cutscene music first, region music second, given that you will hear it in the second room of Saints Campaign. A cold and sparkly Unseen Lands analog for the Winter Wonderland, and it's perfect that being that, even if it's not the best fit for Sky Islands otherwise. Can't knock it for doing the job it was designed to do really damn well, though. And the tune itself is really pleasant, with those undertones of something more ominous, a phrase I've probably said a billion times in this video alone. That's kind of Renworld's whole thing. It's good vibes, it sets the alien tone of Saints Campaign really well, even if it's not much of a tune on its own. Doesn't really go anywhere after the first 30 seconds, but whatever. It's not even the only same replacement song Sky Islands gets either, but I'm gonna save that last one for a different region it also plays in. So let's instead talk about the song it replaced. Yep, the moment you've all been waiting for, the reason you clicked on this video in the first place, it's Kayava time, baby.
for real this time. Here it is in all its glory. The Rain World meme song. The bop to end all bops. The, uh, this isn't even in my top 10 songs in the game. Here they are for reference, with a few that haven't shown up quite yet redacted for spoiler reasons, of course. Kayava probably would be number 11, though. Like, the groove is super cool. The sax, dear lord the sax. Saxophone makes anything and everything better. But yeah, Veil vale North Star is still my pick for the one true bop of the OST, though. Which, speaking of, yep, here we go again. Time to complain about this upbeat tune feeling completely out of place in Rain's world. Except, hmm, for Kayava, I kind of hear it. The bleepy bloopy Morse code thing and the airy saxophone vibes, I kind of get it, actually. Almost. I, I still don't think it quite fits the game all that well, though. Sorry. But it comes closer than the other tunes like it. But if I had to point to the one song that manages to perfectly toe the line between being a jam and being a great Rain World song, well, we merely have to look to our next region. Hell yeah, bioengineering! You know, I'm actually kind of weirded out by how high Industrial ended up because, like, it doesn't exactly have that much music, but, but, it benefits from not really being all that big to begin with. As of Downpour, it's the region with the fewest screens in the game, so I'm not exactly expecting it to have that many different tunes, and the ones it does have, well, I mean, I already gave half the game away, didn't I? Like, to me, bioengineering is a notion of the real Rain World starts here in song form, more so than it fitting Industrial specifically, but I can't say it doesn't fit it either, and it's a hell of a tune. It's something I genuinely listen to on my own time outside of the game. Industrial, mechanical, and menacing with an instantly memorable melody. It's just good music, period. And it doesn't have to sacrifice aesthetic cohesion to do so. That's the good stuff. Speaking of the good stuff, the threat theme. Though, honestly, I've always felt this one is a bit too similar to Outskirts Threat Theme. I know the cliche is that Industrial is just slightly gloomier Outskirts, but having played as much Rainworld as I have, I do actually think Industrial and Outskirts have fairly different vibes, both visually and just in the way the rooms are constructed. So hearing slightly more electronic Outskirts Threat Theme always felt kind of weird to me. Honestly, if the Sky Island Threat Theme was here instead, I think it would have fit perfectly, but not vice versa, so I don't know. Oh, and the tune itself? Yeah, it's fine, though despite this being my most visited region, I could barely remember what this one sounded like before this project. Because, again, Outskirts Threat Theme always comes to mind first, and is better. I'm weirdly mixed on this one. That's okay, though, because Mist Engine is here to pick up the slack. Fun fact about this one, since this was the first song on my list from the Alpha's Gems and Junk soundtrack, I ended up writing that a lot of the songs had Mist Engine vibes until I realized they were all part of that same soundtrack. So this one's kind of the token example of that sound to me, even if it's not my favorite of the bunch. And the tune itself feels more like a transitional piece bridging industrial and garbage waste than anything, which it literally is in game, so yeah, good job. The tune itself is that same kind of mellow groove that a lot of its kin are, though it's otherwise not a standout in that regards. Frankly, industrial as a whole doesn't have a ton of musical identity to it, other than the tunes just generally being, you know, good. And much like Downpour did with his campaigns, I've saved the best for last. Jesus Christ. Sheer Ice Torn is just, when the song really kicks in after that long pause, it feels like the entire world stops, freezes over even. Sheer Ice Torn is more like Threat Theme of the Snow itself than anything, which makes it absolutely brilliant for Saints Campaign, so much so that they used it twice, replacing Kayava and Bioengineering, two of the most popular songs in the game. You only do that when you're absolutely confident in what you're doing, and yeah, they knew what they had on their hands with this one. Like, you get both the sense of approaching danger and the and what it feels like to weather the harshest storm, all while the tune itself is just absolutely a jam and a half. What a groove, man. And not to make it a competition, but I feel like Connor Skinmore kind of just won the entire Downpour OST. Hell, he's behind five of my top ten songs in the game for crying out loud, more than James Primate. Good friggin' work, my dude. And here we are. Yet again, the top two comes down to a base game region versus a Downpour region. Two regions that have some of the most distinct vibes out of the entire bunch. And this time, I don't even really have bias to go on. They're both great. 
really the deciding factor here was, well, one of them is almost twice as big as the other and doesn't have one of the best songs of the game in it, so yeah, it wasn't even that close, actually. Given that we only have two more regions to go, you'd think that we're about done here, but, uh, remember way back when I said Looks at the Moon was tied with two other regions for the most songs in the game? Yeah, uh, those two were our top two, each with nine songs to their name, and by god, with how big Outer Expanse is, it damn well better be packed to bursting with tunes. And Ancient has to be the most iconic of the bunch. Perfect is the first thing you hear when you get to the real Outer Expanse. The decrepit, overgrown temples even more ancient than the ancients themselves. There's a sense of reverence to the tune, both in its timbre and melody, as well as the moments of silence between. I'd say it's the best version of that one Prog Fox song, but not really, because it uses actual bells, doesn't loop as much, and goes more places. It's just so lovely. But we've kind of started from the middle here, and Outer Expanse is structured as a journey. Let's rewind a bit to the start of that journey and see what Sunken Pier sounds like. <laughs> Oh yeah, Sparkles is a really ominous welcoming tune to Sunken Pier that fits its gloomy vibe really well. Absolutely perfect use of the song. There's a reverberating metallicness to its sound as well as a distinctly nocturnal vibe that really sets you on edge. Not a ton else to it otherwise, but as a piece of ambience, it's quite effective. And as we move away from the darkness towards the light of Outer Expanse, we get Wandering Cut. which, hmm, while it's possible I've heard this song once or twice, well, it plays in the room on Upper Sunken Pier that you pretty much need a squid cater to cross, which is just so inconvenient that I never really go that way, leading to me feeling like I'm hearing this song for the first time here. But enough about that, the tune itself is nice, it's almost like trailer music, honestly. A bright, driving melody that gives way to something more ominous as it goes on, which, uh, makes it a weird fit for going from Sunken Pier to Outer Expanse. It'd work better if you were going backwards, which you never ever want to do an Outer Expanse, so yeah, this is a weird one to me. I like the tune itself fine enough though, so whatever. And sure, let's knock out the last dangerous tune now so we can end off on the prettier stuff. Outer Expanse's threat theme kind of suffers from how the OST presents it. There's like way too much of this one to cram into just two minutes. Three whole different versions of the threat theme, the sunken pier version, the daytime version, and the nighttime version, and the soundtrack cut has literally impossible combinations of threat theme layers too. It's just overly busy and cluttered, which is a shame because the tune itself is really good. I'm mad at how clever it is to have the train bell as the baseline written for this one. Generally, the first thing you hear as the threat approaches. That's so good. It fits best of sunken pier, admittedly, not a lot of trains past that point, but I'm already sold, so I'm not gonna complain about it. It's also like the most anxiety-inducing threat theme of the entire bunch. That wonky melody is absolutely deranged, but I can't deny that there's something distinctly organic about it, too. And with how much else is going on here, it can get overwhelming, but it's just got so much personality, and I love that. Alright, and now it's time to calm down with some pretty tunes. I'll get this out of the way quick, my one gripe with days is that it feels weirdly climactic for the middle of Outer Expanse, but beyond that, oh my god, the vibes are just immaculate? It's so unfair. The absolutely gorgeous textures, the constant swell driven home by that low mix symbol, the sheer warmth and beauty radiating off this track, god, I want to live here. And we still have so many lovely little ambient tracks to go. The sun beaming through a hole in the ceiling of a ruined temple, an abandoned train car sitting silent in the background, nature having fully overtaken everything the ancients built, the world becoming a more lively, cozier place. Yeah, open sky sure does sound like that, huh? Just the most comforting, welcoming vibes possible. And it's so cute! God damn! Just puts a dumb smile on my face every time I hear it, man. And moving closer towards our journey's end, we hear Bloom. A 
another piece of lush and warm ambience that one definitely feels right at home in outer expanse but two also i swear i hear the main theme in here in bits and pieces and having that bit of familiarity as our long journey to the slug tree nears its end yeah it feels earned and it works so goddamn well not exactly the most standout piece of ambience in the game besides that just really damn lovely much like Man, all the warm aiming to this region is gonna make me cry. Ah! Reminiscence is like the anti-emotion thread. The foreshadowing of the good ending, smiley face. I just love that flute like sim so much. The tune itself is just really cute and cozy. Not much more to add. I just want to bask in these vibes all day. And, uh, hmm, that's the end of the journey, but I promised you nine songs, so what's left? Oh, oh god damn it. How dare you? Like, this isn't even fair. Pictures of the Past is a cutscene song. Not just that, it's literally the first song you hear when starting the game. It's it's literally cheating. This is literally Pictures of the Past. Like, yes, okay, it's a perfect fit for the location because this Easter egg is just amazing and I love it. Beautiful fan service. But also, like, this barely even counts, man. God, this game soundtrack is just so good, man. And yeah, I think Outer Expanse is running away with having the best vibes of any region in the game, but as for the region with the best music, Music? Well, I don't think it was ever going to be anything else. Garbage Waste tops this list because it is just so singular in its aesthetic. Even just visually, it's, I dare say, the only region in the game that smears itself in actively ugly and garish colors. Slime green, rotten orange, and muddy brown. And it's so much more ragged and organic than damn near any other region, except, well, Outer Expanse. It's so unlike anywhere else in Rainworld because, despite how gross it is, it's so lively and busy. Which, the scavengers who pretty much define the region definitely contribute a lot to that feeling, yeah. And Garbage City Shuffle does a great job of capturing every element that makes Garbage Waste what it is. The tribal sound by way of earthy percussion and the twangy main melody mixed with an ominous low rumbling that fills out the atmosphere and makes the whole tune feel a lot more melancholic. Scavved up if true, and when the funny monkeys are around, those ominous vibes tend to get a bit more threatening. And also, a bit wacky. Yeah, I literally cannot imagine how this threat theme could sound more like Garbage Waste than it does. It's practically just threat theme of scavengers. Or a threat theme of Brother Longlegs. They're kinda goofy little guys too. Maybe just threat theme of germs. I think this is another threat theme that the OST doesn't do a great job of presenting, and it's not my favorite to listen to by any stretch, but it's easily one of the most memorable. Though, I'm actually gonna take back a bit of what I said, cause this is the real BLL threat theme. Albino is such a jam. The tune harnesses that same kind of weird and wacky energy of the main threat theme, but gives it a bit more of a pulse and more of an imposing sound to it to really make you feel like you're in danger, despite not even technically being a threat theme. The Rot really knows how to get down and boogie, yeah! But when they're all dead and gone in Saints time, well, what would that sound like? Yeah, Garbage Waste actually did get two whole Saint replacement songs, though Accidented Condition is probably the only case where I don't like the replacement as much as the original. It's definitely got the kind of uncanny and uneasy vibes I'd expect for the region, mixed in with a much chillier and more downbeat sound, and there's some really good swell as it goes on, but uh, it's just a bit tuneless for my tastes. Anyways, one last tune to round out our delve into lower Garbage Wastes. <laughs> Thank you.
Lack of comfort's got a lot of the same uneasy and uncanny vibes as Accidental Condition, but also feels a lot more unsteady. Uncomfortable. Huh, wonder how it got its name. It's freaky and glitchy and kinda sounds wet too, which yeah, it plays right next to the drainage gate, so that's A plus placement right there. It's, again, not exactly a tune I'd seek out on my own time, but it's great as a piece of surreal ambience. Anyways, I'm running out of good transitions, here's Garbage Worms. This one's the other entrance tune to the region, kind of like slowed and reverbed Mist Engine, which, I mean, yeah, that one plays a few rooms prior, so they make a good one-two pair. Though this one's weirdly mellow and foreboding for being an entry tune. I don't know, feels more like something that you play in the middle of a region when you're really in the thick of it. The tune itself's real pleasant though, even if it's a bit simple and short, and if it's fine enough with the gloomier side of Garbage Waste with the quiet sadness of its decay. I guess there's something to that. Even then, it's nowhere near as gloomy as Overcast, so... This song is so artificer coded that it might as well just be cussing music for the start of its journey. The mellow sadness that accompanies Artie's story. A darker tune for a darker campaign. It's so somber, yet still a perfect fit for Garbage Waste's sonic palette. Really evocative tune with some really lovely vibes. Gives me just the right amount of chills. And as usual, saving the best for last. Stoneheads is like the kind of music I can imagine the scavengers themselves making. Banging their spears against the ground to set the beat, tribal chants filling the air as they dance about. It just really gets the imagination going. And it does kind of slap too, yeah. Another example of an upbeat song that works, fits its location just outside the scav fortress perfectly, is more ominous than fun, is instantly memorable, couldn't ask it to do more than it's doing. It's just great. But it's not the best song of the region. <laughs> Eyes of Iron is literally just cold stone heads, in that it's both very tribal and percussive, but also has the colder sparkle of Saints OST, and it's so much better that it almost makes the original look bad by comparison, honestly. Though this is really more of a two cake scenario, both are great, there's two of them now. That's so unfair to every other region, but Eyes of Iron is just something else, man. Like there's just something so terrifying about this song. The ominous rumble of an approaching storm, the primal tribal sound giving way to the bitter cold as the land and all its denizens slowly freeze to death, and when the blizzard passes there's not left but silence. Truly chilling stuff. It's so good. And yes, this was the last top tenor I was hiding from y'all. And that's it for Garbage Waste and for this ranking as a whole. Frankly, the order is pretty flighty and certainly not meant to be taken as Bible. On some days, I definitely prefer the serenity of Outer Expanse over the action of Garbage Waste, and on other days, I'm just listening to the coast on repeat and you can't stop me. I hope that, at the very least, this was an interesting dissection of the game's soundtrack and how it adds so goddamn much to every region in the game. The soundtrack and the sound design both, really. Rainworld sounds fantastic, and I'm just glad to have given myself the chance to talk about this music here. And I'd love to know what your favorite songs are too, cause music taste is objective as hell and I'm sure none of y'all agreed with every single last thing I said here. Don't know if I'll have any more Rainworld videos on the horizon, I've kinda talked to death every last thing about it I'd ever want to, but regardless, I'll be seeing y'all for whatever I do put out next. Until then, have a safe and sluggy night.